Good morning. We've come to Sidmouth on the South Devon coast for a few days in early September. The weather's lovely. We'll start our walk on the seafront. You can tell that it's a hot day by the heat haze out to sea. We're down at the east end of the promenade now, coming up to the small lifeboat station, which is manned by volunteers. Here's the lifeboat on its trailer, a small inshore rescue boat. Walking through the town now, we can see Fields Department Store on our left. Well, we would if there wasn't a van in the way. There's a lot of floral displays around the town. Sidmouth has been a frequent winner of Britain in Bloom Awards, and I'm not surprised. If you've seen any of my other videos walking around towns, you might remember that I like to include the war memorials. And when we visit the seaside, I also like to see the seagulls. Here at the War Memorial in Sidmouth, I've got two for the price of one. A seagull sitting on top of the memorial. The parish church is dedicated to St Giles and St Nicholas. There's been a church here since the 13th century. There's a very impressive font in front of us. The church that we can see today was built in the 1860s though the tower was retained from the 15th century medieval structure. We'll walk around the back of the church, following the path past the tennis courts. There's a bowling green in front of us, with several games going on in the sunshine. The local conservation society has put up a number of blue plaques around the town to highlight places of historical interest. Here's one telling us about Blackmoor Hall that used to stand here. The hall is gone but the gardens are now one of Sidmouth's public gardens. There's also a memorial here to those who kept our shores safe during World War II. We're back in the pedestrianised centre of Sidmouth now. It's Monday and because of staff shortages a number of pubs aren't serving food tonight and some restaurants are closed. Several of the hotels are not serving food to non-residents. Because of that, here's the queue at the takeaway fish and chip shop at 6 o'clock on Monday evening in early September. Costa Coffee is coming up. Until recently, there had been a pub on that site since the 1400s. How times change. The fashion for English coastal resorts grew in the Georgian and Victorian periods of the 18th and 19th centuries. 
A number of Georgian and Regency buildings still remain in Sidmouth, like these in front of us. We're walking up the side of the cricket pitch here, with a view over the sea behind us. This must be one of the nicest country cricket club houses in the county. And here's a croquet lawn. You don't see these very often, but I've seen three here. In the late 18th and early 19th centuries, Sidmouth began to be visited by the gentry. In 1819, George III's son, Edward, Duke of Kent, with his wife and baby came to stay. The baby's name was Victoria and she would later become Queen Victoria. At the western end of the town there's a lovely undercliff walk that leads out onto a wide sandy beach at low tide. Around the corner, we find Jacob's Ladder. There's a webcam here, and the link is in the text below. Jacob's Ladder is a tall set of white wooden steps, as you can see, which lead up from the beach to Connaught Gardens at the top. These famous steps date back to the early 1900s. Here's the view from the top. And here's the view from the other end of the beach. Connaught Gardens date from around 1820, but the gardens that we see today were constructed in the early 1930s, when the council bought the land. They were named after the Duke of Connaught, the third son of Queen Victoria, and he officially opened the gardens in 1934, when he was aged 84. There's a lovely walled garden, a sunken garden, and several different landscaped areas, all of which are beautifully kept. Concerts are held here during the summer. You have brilliant views of Sidmouth and the cliffs from up here. Probably the best known place to visit locally is the Donkey Sanctuary. There's about 500 rescue donkeys here. The Donkey Sanctuary is on the hills outside of Sidmouth and as you can see it was a very foggy day when we visited. Some of the donkeys live indoors and some live in fields outside. You might just be able to see a couple of donkeys in the field here through the mist. My pictures here don't do justice to the Donkey Sanctuary for two reasons. One because of the mist, but also my camera got damp and packed up, so I didn't take nearly as many photos as I'd hoped to. If you come to this area, please think about visiting the Donkey Sanctuary and making a donation. They rely on donations for their funding. You can also donate online. I've put a link in the text below. I hope you've enjoyed this brief visit with us to Historic Sidmouth. If you have, please subscribe to our channel to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching.